Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about mediocre code. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how would you define mediocre code? Uh, not bad or good, I suppose. Uh, so I got a similar question uh, the other day about uh, what was it? How I rate and grade uh, code tests and things like that, like how do I evaluate the quality of somebody's code and in that video I basically state that uh, I do so by looking at how close a person is able to follow good practice in terms of, now I'm not talking about like design patterns necessarily, I'm talking about just is the code clean, is it readable, does it uh, you know do what it's supposed to be doing uh, does the person know how the community usually does work so that's uh, where you know if you're working in Go people do things a certain way, Ruby does things in a certain way, Java does certain things in a certain way etc etc do you, do you know understand how the communities do this sort of thing so that it feels familiar because there is this idea uh, which is that it sh you know all software should look like one person wrote it I don't believe that that is ever going to be true ever but there are conventions and practices that sort of prove that you are in the know, if that makes sense, of how things are commonly used. And uh, when I see someone break that, my first question is always, all right, did they make this better or worse? Because if I can see that they did, so if they do this, this is where code truly stands out to me. If I can see they do something that I don't fully understand at first, and then I look at it, and I realize that this actually is smarter than doing things the normal way. Then I have a question for that person. If I see that it, they do something that is a little bit weird, but I also see that it's worse, then it's hard for me to assume things, but I can probably guess, depending on how bad the snafu is, that they're probably not very good at what they do. And a concrete example of that was a few weeks ago, I did a review code review for a so-called senior software developer who claimed to be like, I don't know how many years of experience and so forth and so forth. He sent in a code test in TypeScript and most of the types were in the any format or like they were typed as any which basically is makes the whole thing JavaScript and then he actually had copy pasted one of the source files from some other project and not a JavaScript uh, like the debounce function, which is fairly, fairly, hopefully very famous if you're a fr front-end developer. You should probably know about that, I hope. Uh, the, that function, he had copy-pasted from some other project right into the code base, not converted it to TypeScript, even though the int there was the only JavaScript file in the entire project, right? And, uh, you know, you just put the comment saying, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I copy-pasted this to the part here because I didn't want to create a debounce function. I kind of go, if you were a master-level, like, JavaScript type of person, you would know that there are many libraries where you can do this. And the norm, because he's working in, like, and the product is set up as a Yarn project. So he, he like, if he knew what he was doing, he would not be doing it that way he would be importing it through Lodash or underscore or like whichever he's using, right? There's really no way he can swing that this is just a good idea, if that makes sense, unless, you know, he's going to make the supply chain argument or something like that. I don't know. Anywho, uh, that's something that would, stu would stand out to me as real, weird and bad, if that makes sense. But then I've had other candidates who have done really clever stuff where, you know, the other day I was looking at another code test that a candidate had... Uh, he was supposed to fetch some data from a network uh, or like we had like this JSON file he was supposed to fetch and so he had in his code test he had uh, used the dynamic imports for that specific one in order to load the uh, the file into uh, into like dynamically into the uh, application instead of just inlining like the the JavaScript right and that stood out to me as kind of interesting because the mediocre quote-unquote code is to, you know, just import it directly and just 
be kind of be lazy about it and even I did you know I would do such a thing if uh, if it was just a coding challenge or something like that for example but he thought about it one step further and that's the sort of thing that sort of stands out the mediocre code is usually what I call the code that you would expect anybody at that level to write uh, because it's like it's the norm that's sort of how you do it or it's the lazy slightly lazy way or like it can differ a little bit it's not like there's an absolute measurement for this but my gut feeling is usually fairly good on these things uh, because uh, a lot and I mean full disclosure guys in order to to tell if someone is extraordinary at software it's actually really difficult to do that by just looking at code like most uh, most of the time you can't tell the difference between someone who has 20 years of experience and someone who has just a few years of experience when they write code if they're sort of you know decent software developers because it's all quote unquote mediocre code but then there are there they, they are these areas of the software development process which are extra complicated or extra hard or like so forth and so forth and these are the areas where you can really tell if someone knows what they're doing because it's extraordinarily hard sometimes to do certain things or like you you require a lot of years of experience or a lot of personal research and insight and so forth to figure out certain things about uh, about well tip you you know your own tips and tricks and that's is what I love so much about engineering because a lot of the like insights people get have already usually been part of somebody else's insights because we sort of ha that's why I say that engineering is a need base when you have a need you're trying to solve a concrete problem and usually people have the same sort of problems and it's not that uncommon that people come up with sort of the same solution to things and so it's really nice when you see like to me it's a treat when I see someone who I mean the best thing is if you see someone who solves a problem in a way that there where you, where you still have problems figuring that out and you see that damn this person actually had a solution to this problem that you know, I haven't thought about. That's really treat, uh, a big treat for me. But the mediocre code, as I said, that's just the boilerplate sort of standard stuff that you would expect. You don't. I mean, I don't even process it at this point. It's uh, it's what I and I don't really like people. I mean, there's sound might sound, it might sound like there's a negative tone there somewhere. But mediocre code to me, guys, is like. Unless I am looking specifically to, for a superstar software developer, I'm looking for someone who is like supposed to somehow I don't know. I can't even I can't even remember the last time there was a requirement for someone to have above average quote unquote code to get a job or do anything like that. If you are able to do to produce mediocre code, guys, I promise you, every single software company in the world practically is going to like hire you. The only thing that you should watch out for is if you, as I said, you break the norm, so you can't produce or so forth. Bad code is the only thing that the software, the IT industry, truly, truly despises and has does or doesn't want to stand for but mediocre and like it's functioning it's you know it's nothing special or anything like that holy shit that's what i write on a daily basis it's actually as i said really rare that you can go and flex your muscles and show off your seniority uh, because it's not every day you have that sort of problem so what i want you to take away from this is that mediocre code the way that i define mediocre code is the code that is the norm for how you do things. It's basic, basic, basic stuff. In other words, do you know how to write a clean, efficient loop uh, or a clean, efficient? Uh, what if you're doing React components or you're doing like a standard clean thing, or are you messing things up? Are you making things complicated? Or are you breaking all the conventions, etc., etc.? In backend, it's the same thing. Can you write a small REST API following sort of the practices that you would expect? I mean, there are always deviations, but I mean, it should sort of fit into the same sort of thing that most people are doing, unless you're super, super smart and you have a proven way of doing it better. Uh, that's a different sort of story, but th that's to me is mediocre code. And as I said, guys, mediocre code is like 90% of 
what it means to be a software developer because if you try to be clever all the time you're actually going to end up making worse code i promise you that because it's not that often you have to write really sophisticated super solutions to things and those last 10 percent that's where the seniority comes in usually that's where there are specific areas that are extra hard and extra difficult to uh, to figure out or you need to have someone who really has done their homework in order to figure out how to scale a system or things like that that's when seniority comes in and that is usually where the the mastership of the software developer is shown but as I said that's like a minor part of the entire process of writing software have a great day